Hello everybody, um, my name is Simon Barton, I am an editor at the Process Excellent Network, an online community for process professionals, business leaders and executives who want to improve their businesses through process and operational excellence. Uh, thank you for joining for the, uh, us for this webinar today, uh, where we're going to learn about how process mining is becoming a BPM game changer and how process owners can reduce cost and variation to become leaner. We have two presenters today, uh, the first is Mikhail Rodic, uh, CPO at Minute. Uh, Michael is responsible for building and scaling minutes. He also develops relations with the process mining academic community and uh, and he evangelizes process mining benefits to enterprises worldwide. The second is Richard Livoski, CSO at Minute. Uh, Richard focuses on developing strategic partnerships and increasing customer usage and engagement. He joined Minute from Orderlord and Innocent, which he co-founded. Um, throughout the webinar, if you have any questions, um, please let please post them on the console, and we will try to get them answered as soon as possible. Um, so, without any without any further ado, uh, welcome to you both. Hello, everyone. This is Richard speaking. Uh, I'm very excited to be here together with Michal. I will give a short introduction in terms of what the insights from the market are and what we've been seeing and why it's important uh, that process mining is becoming uh, huge in BPM. So without further ado, I will start off. First of all, uh, in terms of what we will see today is really the insights from the market, what we hear from the customers and what the value proposition is. Uh, then we'll tell you a little bit about uh, what the market interest is like and uh, some insights from Gartner. Then Michal will take you through uh, what process mining is about, how it can help you, and also show you where Minute uh, can actually add value to what you're doing. Finally, we'll show you uh, the value proposition and the case studies that we've done with clients, which will be very interesting for you. And in the end, we'll tell you a bit about the giveaway uh, if you want to experience uh, Minute live in your organization and reap the benefits from it. So let's kick it off. In Gartner, maybe you have seen this uh, hype cycle from 2015, but Gartner actually uh, predicts that automated uh, business process discovery, which is uh, what we do, and also business process analysis, is something that will be huge in the next two to five years. So basically 217 to 220, is the right time when most companies will be adopting uh, adopting automated business process discovery. So it's a good time for you to listen in. In terms of trends, this has been supported because uh, organizations are not only moving from analog to digital, but they are also uh, reaping more benefits in terms of uh, giving them more value in terms of the in terms of the uh, processes and needs that they have. Uh, one of the key things that we see as critical is the robotic process automation, and that's where most of the interest is coming from right now, as companies not only uh, digital, digitize the processes, but they really want to replace them with, uh, with robots. And that's where we come in as well, which is kind of a site, uh, site application of process mining. And of course, Internet of Things uh, is, is huge in, uh, in manufacturing and coupled with artificial intelligence, what we are delving into uh, this year as well, uh, it will be even better in terms of what benefits you can reap. Just for your information, this is where most of the interest from the industry is coming from and actually it's coinciding with who is on this webinar today and who signed up for it. Uh, mostly we see consulting companies that do process mining, process optimization, which we work closely with as partners. Uh, then banks and finance, mostly because of the compliance uh, that is required, as well as some of the things that um, banks are not so easily able to do, like uh, seeing processes across different departments, across systems. And of course, high tech and manufacturing are, are also um, very eager to, to join in. In terms of where process mining can be applied, you can really look at any industry and any process. What we are looking for right now is really the business critical processes that can drive more revenue for you or can drive savings so that uh, it really impacts the bottom line. So whether it's in banking, whether it's acquisition or sales processes, whether it's loan or 
or uh, mortgage processes, all of these uh, we can uh, we can use and you can actually uh, reap value out of minute. In terms of the problems, most of the time when we talk to clients, there are, there are two answers that we get if we ask them what the challenges are with their process optimization. One is that no, we don't have any problems, which we quickly show them with our data and with our with our system that there are things that they can actually improve uh, quite substantially. But the more frequent answer is really that we don't know where to start. We are dedicated to process optimization. We want to uh, we want to improve our processes and co continuously, but we don't really know how to do it cost efficiently because process analysis uh, in the manual way is just so so difficult to do and so expensive. Also, after after it's been done, uh, deciding what to improve and how to evaluate the impact of that change is also something that uh, that is very difficult to see uh, from from the results that uh, manual process analysis gives you. And finally, the continuous aspect of it all, where you can see whether you have actually improved and see it within the processes, not only not only on some high level analytics. That's something that uh, we can help you with, and that's kind of the value proposition what we put together. So it's really bringing the cost of process analysis down to a fraction of, it, of what it is usually. Uh, we do this by not having people to uh, go around and analyze everything and sort of searching for the needle in the haystack, but really drilling down and looking into the key aspects that, um, or the, the, the key points where there are obvious bottlenecks, where there are obvious problems, where you should start. So really pinpointing the, those problems instead of trying to go around and searching for them everywhere. Then really what Minute does, and Michal will show you uh, very soon, is it returns actionable results. So it can really show you not only that there is a bottleneck, but it can show you data behind it. Uh, and that you can use as a yardstick for the decision making. So it's kind of the quantifiable, uh, quantifiable way that you can make decisions on. And of course, the final thing is that it's not only uh, good for um, the first time analysis of pro process, but continuously looking at processes. And even if you remove bottlenecks, you can still go on and, uh, you know, overtake the mark that you have set and just, just become better over and over. This is one of the things that we, uh, that we found in terms of doing, um, doing process analysis, especially the first one, compared to a classic or usual case where a consultant would usually uh, take 12 weeks to, to really get results out of, out of uh, workshops, out of timings, and it would uh, yield some results, but the results are very subjective, which again, Michal will tell you a little bit more about why the results aren't that good. But the, the key thing is that we, we can drive, uh, drive this time down to uh, three weeks. And these three weeks, for example, that was a process that was uh, in a bank, which actually only took a few days. The only thing that took uh, a few more days was really getting the data out of the systems and identifying the right systems. But this is kind of only the start because once you have this, you can then continuously uh, check and analyze your, your process uh, again and again without any of these added costs. So, so the value that we create for customers is actually pretty huge. Uh, now I will give the words to Michal and he will take you through the whole presentation and show you the demo. Thank you very much, Richard. <clears throat> so, um, yes. So, what what you have seen on the uh, on the last slides, uh, the comparison between the manual analysis and the automatic analysis, is what we call the paradigm shift in in, in consulting and, and process analysis. And basically, we have experienced uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, paradigm shift uh, ourselves. This is even the reason why we started with uh, Minute and developing Minute, because. Um, 
our background is is um, providing solutions for banks, for for enterprises, for institutions, and. Um, we have started with, with providing solutions based on uh, electronic documents and digitization and recognition of, uh, of documents, and basically document management systems. And uh, naturally, the first question was like, what, what can we do? Uh, the customers are asking, what can we do with the documents? And we said, well, you can automate processes. You can automate the flow of the documents in the enterprise. And uh, we did those projects. We experienced them. And we did it um, in a way that we call the old school way. And uh, that means um, sending a team of uh, process analysts or consultants uh, to, this, uh, to this customer and uh, having long workshops and talks with uh, process owners, with people involved in processes and uh, gathering all the data and then summarizing, analyzing, trying to understand, um, understand that process. And um, um, basically we are coping uh, we are we were been we've been fighting with with several problems um, and uh, and the first one is subjectivity uh, so when you are talking with with people involved in the processes even if the process is, is structured and is, is maybe described you are getting subjective uh, opinion on how the process works uh, so either either how the people uh, feel it should work or how they feel or how they think it works um, Connected with that is the limited view on the process uh, Many people involved in the processes are seeing their work and the work of people they are communicating with uh, But they are not seeing the overall picture of, of the process so you need to like um, put all those things together and try to and come up with with the with the reality the third thing, uh, the third issue uh, that we experienced was exceptions, and exceptions in two ways. Uh, the first one was either um, that, that many exceptions have been forgotten uh, during the analysis, and then um, we, we found those exceptions when the system or the, the workflow was in production. Um, on the other hand, there were exceptions which were taken as, as the backbone of the process, as the main flow of the process, not as an exception. So, so uh, there was then problem with compliance. And the fourth one is the visibility. Uh, we've been talking with many clients who said, we do not have processes at all. Uh, what they meant was that the processes were not structured, were not described, were not automated. So they, they, they thought that there, there are no processes in their enterprise. Uh, anyway, if, if people, users, employees uh, in, that, in that company are working in a systematic way and doing their, their jobs, they're using some kind of uh, procedures or, or steps uh, in, in a certain order. So there are always some kind of processes. And uh, um, to overcome those problems and to make the, the analysis uh, faster and to uh, fight with all the um, uh, work that was done after the workflows have been uh, put to production, we were searching and we were asking a question like, is there any way to do this better? And we found an academic area called process mining. It's a relatively young research discipline, maybe 12 years old, and it's something that combines the computational intelligence with uh, already known data mining. But um, as data mining is looking at the data from uh, uh, the perspective of finding certain patterns or certain um, connections between uh, correlation between the data, process mining is, is looking at the data from the perspective of processes. So, um, the enterprises today are working like a big data factories. They're producing a lot of data. And uh, this can be valuable data, um, which is, or, or data which is considered now uh, to be valuable, uh, meaning the data in the databases, enterprise databases, used in the business intelligence area. And uh, then there are metadata to this data, and there are system logs and different documents, different streams, uh, from using uh, certain applications, XML data, and so on. Um, I try to use it, uh, noise data or waste data because uh, right now nobody is looking at them. Um, they are forgotten on the servers, sometimes used for audit purposes, but uh, not used as, as valuable data. But um, these data are called event logs, so traces of, um, of, of certain procedures or processes in the, in the information systems or uh, across um, uh, across the enterprise, so so there are always traces of the work that people or the systems are doing, and and uh, process mining is working with this, and this is called even blocks. And uh, 
it basically uh, doesn't matter if if the process is all um, stored or the traces are stored in one system. So um, and if, you, if, if you or the other customer is using a, already a BPM engine and um, uh, the process is automated in a BPM engine, that's, that's fine, that's absolutely okay. Uh, there are many processes who are going cross systems. So there are uh, a part of the process is in, is in a ERP system, a part of the process is in some kind of CRM system or a certain uh, third party system um, specifically developed for the customer. So um, we do not care about it. Um, uh, Minute can can connect uh, using uh, building connectors, uh, either file based um, using comma separated files, special process mining format files, um, or connect to databases like using a SQL Server connector or an ODBC connector to connect to any systems basically where you you can buy or or find an ODBC connector to. And uh, also, if if you are going cross systems, uh, it, it's not a problem. So um, uh, using ETL platforms, using visualization tools, they are able to connect uh, to those systems and manipulate the data, clean the data, Minute can uh, take those event logs, um, pre-processed event logs and, and analyze them. And when we are speaking about event logs, uh, what we mean is, is basically these kind of events and traces of, of the processes. There are three main attributes that are absolutely necessary for process mining to work, um, which is the activity. So what what happened? Um, basically, what, what was the event about? Uh, then the timestamp, so uh, the time, date, and time, when did the uh, event happen? And then uh, something called the case ID. So in the BPM world, this is uh, a process instance ID or some identification of the process instance, but in general, generally speaking, it is a correlation uh, between those events. So if we are talking about invoice approval process, this can be an invoice number. If we are talking about the customer journey in an e-shop, it can be a customer, certain customer ID or a session ID. If we are talking about education, it can be uh, something like an identification of a student. So something that is uh, uh, correlating the events to a certain entity or object that we want to analyze. And those logs are coming in many different formats, so this is kind of an example of uh, how the log can look like. It can be a comma separated file and uh, process mining uh, is, is helping the consultant and the analyst to find the important uh, data. It automatically finds the important data in that event log. It, uh, takes the data out of the event log, it creates the activities around uh, the data, it calculates many different metrics and statistics around it, it can even connect those activities and automatically create the flow of the process, how it works in reality, and what's more, we can even bring life to those processes. So you can see how dynamic the processes are, how the flow works, we can animate the processes and you will see that in the, in the demonstration. And if we are talking about process mining, there are three areas uh, that are covered uh, by, by process mining solutions and Minit covers them as well. And the first one is uh, what Richard was mentioning is the process discovery. That's the main thing, uh, finding the processes in those even data. Uh, finding the reality, this is very important. And so we are not working with subjective uh, opinions. We are looking at how the process really flows. Um, we can even extract the essence of the process, so-called backbone of the process, the most frequent passes, happy path. Uh, you can call it, you can name it uh, uh, anything you want. So, but the main principle is you are looking at the reality. Uh, based on that reality, um, Minute can help you diagnose the processes. So. Um, you can immediately spot potential bottlenecks, inefficiencies, problems in that process. It visually um, uh, visually shows you where those bottlenecks uh, are. And uh, if you are working as a consultant, you can speak with the customer, you can have the workshops and, and the talks with the customer based on the real data. Not talking about some, at that point of time, imaginary process, but already taking the real data and speaking about the, the real, real problems. And find the process improvements and, and so on. And the third one, very important, is process compliance or comparison of processes. Um, so 
yes, you can have the same process running in different regions. You can have the same process running uh, in different time frames. Uh, so uh, you want to compare uh, year 2016 with 2017. You want to compare the same process running in uh, Germany with the same process running in um, Australia or, um, or in different departments or based on other data. Uh, Basically, we have been talking that the event log needs, or, or the process mining needs uh, the event log to have these three attributes, these three main attributes, but you can enhance the event log with further attributes that can help you to analyze further and to drill down in the process. So, comparing processes. And, of course, if you are, um, uh, Richard was talking about the, the actions uh, that uh, Manit will show you, how, how you can improve the process. If you improve the process, if you make some optimization, you can, of course, compare uh, the state before and after that optimization. Okay, but um, just not not just to talk about uh, that in in the form of slides. Let me show you how that works in 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 real life. So let me show you a short demonstration before we go to the uh, to the um, case studies or the examples of uh, where where minute helped. So. Um, so this is Minit. Um, Minit was built um, on on um, a few premises. We we tried or a few pillars. We call it. Um, we really wanted to um, Minit to be uh, data centric. So um, to to focus your attention attention of the analysts of the people working with the processes on the most important things. Um, uh, then secondly. We wanted it to be to be nice, to be um, interactive, so you can work with Minit uh, with the customer, uh, or with your management, uh, or with the people involved in the processes, and and talk about it and and, and really play with the processes uh, during those workshops or or presentations. And the third one was uh, the speed of processing. So we wanted really to, to work with Minit to be as seamless as possible. Okay, so. Um, here we can see these are the projects, uh, processes that we currently uh, have imported and um, uh, there is a backstage behind the application called repository um, where you just uh, put your event logs, you can import your event logs in, in that repository. Um, so uh, the first, first step is just to create a data source. You can create a data source from uh, from different uh, points, from from uh, importing an, a file, from uh, connecting to a database, connecting to a, using an ODBC driver. So these are all the uh, the possibilities. We can connect to an SQL server um, very easily. You just select view with with your event log. Uh, you can preview that and uh, and just import it. Um, Then, if we uh, search for that, search for the data source, you just double click on the data source, you have this, uh, this kind of event log. Uh, Minute tries to analyze the event log, tries to analyze the events, and already sees that, yeah, this is, this is something uh, that looks like an activity. This is a case ID. Here are some timestamps. So, this seems to be the starting timestamp and the finishing timestamp. You can help him. You can even. Um, um, like um, um, set different attributes, resources, either human resources or system resources, um, and and uh, then just say, okay, let's go to process description, name your process, review it, and that's it. And when you go to the front end view uh, and you click on the process, the process visualizes the data. So on the input, you have you have a really um, a, a comma separated file, just a text file or a database uh, with this one table or one view and it visualizes the process for you. So it finds all the activities. What you are looking at is the frequential analysis of the process. So uh, the hello effect, the thickness of the lines is showing you the most frequent paths. It's the number of occurrences of certain events. This is an invoice approval process in a logistics operator uh, called Jeffco, a French company. Uh, we've done this uh, kind of analysis for them. And uh, you, can, you can see the process. You can easily see where the most frequent path uh, is uh, in that process. If, if the process map is too complicated, you have many possibilities to customize the process map. The first one is to use the sliders 
to simplify the process map. So we can go uh, to 0%, we can go just to the backbone of the process. This is the most frequent path. And then uh, just analyze this by adding the activities and looking at the different, um, uh, different uh, um, we call it exceptional behavior that is occurring not so often, but it, it happens in reality in that process. If there are the timestamps, if there are uh, information about the start and the end of uh, these activities, you can also easily switch to so-called performance view. And if I zoom that, I can see that now I'm not seeing the uh, frequencies of those activities or, or paths between those activities. But what I'm seeing is right now the mean duration of those activities. So I can immediately spot where the potential bottlenecks are, where there are problems, where there are activities that are taking on average longer than other activities in that process, and there are potential uh, optimization points. And I can even go to more details, so if I click on that activity, I'm seeing the predecessors and the successors uh, of that, and um, I can see all the frequency and performance analysis as well as top attributes analysis. So I immediately see, for example, human resources or system resources that are performing uh, that activity most often. Or I can switch any other attribute in that log, for example, supplier name, and I can look uh, for which suppliers this invoice approval activity is, is taking place. And there are, there are advanced analysis as well. Um, so, uh, that, that are the, the possibilities for, for performance analysis. Um, you can look at the data not only from the perspective of the process map or the activities, but you have, if you have the information about who performed a certain event, you can switch to so-called social chart. And what you immediately see is the uh, task flow or the communication between different human or system resources. So how, how they are communicating, what is the frequency of the, that communication or task flow in that, in that process, just by clicking, clicking on a different visualization option. Um, we think, and, and process mining very easily allows this, that um, right now we are looking at the process as a whole. So we are looking at all the process instances in one process map. But each process instance is working in a different way, so we call that variance. And process mining is calculating this process variance, or variations. And uh, MINIT allows you to very easily analyze those variations, because uh, sometimes um, you are not focusing on the granularity of uh, certain activities, but you are just focusing on, on variations. So uh, here are the variations found in that process, and you can see that the variation number one, 50% uh, of the cases in that event log is taking this path, and it's, it's not a surprise that this is the most frequent path or backbone of the process. But we can look that there is a certain um, certain uh, variation in the process that is uh, covering 28% of the cases, and there is an activity called manual entering of the order number. And uh, you can then switch to the performance, uh, performance view to see how much time it takes to, to enter that order number, and uh, how many times it, it, it occurs. So um, this is a potential potential bottleneck to get rid of this, of this manual entering of the order number, and to speed up the process with this, with this variation. And the um, support for the variation analysis um, uh, is, is also here. Uh, we uh, are offering a, a view called Variant Overview, so you can look at the audio variations, but just, just with one click on that variation. You can see the bottlenecks in that variation. You can see the whole statistics for that, for the variations. And also, in this chart here about, you can see like at which point of time in your event log that variation happens. So if you are from um, a retail or, or you are working with in, in some peak periods uh, or your customers are having these peak periods, you can find, for example, certain variations that are happening before Christmas or during the end of financial year or something like that. And, and compare them and maybe um, so we call it learn from, from, from the best, so comparing different process variations and, uh, uh, and, and taking the best one. So, uh, for example, if we, if we look at the mean duration found here, we can see that 
these two variations are taking on average one day, but there is a certain variation three uh, covering 8% of cases taking two days and 22 hours on average. And uh, this is something maybe that is of interest and I want to optimize that variation. So I can uh, easily go to filtering and I can filter, I can drill down in that process. So I just click on the filtering options and I say apply, this will set the filter automatically to that variation and I can say apply and I will get only that variation and I can uh, then analyze it further. For example, looking at different statistics and the statistics are automatically calculated for all the attributes in, in that uh, process, in that filtered process or the whole process. So um, let me just um, um, just delete this filter so we see all the data. And let's go back to statistics. So here we can see the case overview. Here we can see on this is the invoice approval process. So you can easily spot the weeks, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then, then uh, some weekend. You can see how the, how the events are coming in. Uh, we can look at the statistics of different human resources or system resources, their average times. You can filter them uh, by certain other attribute. So for example, we can look at activities. I want to see the activity uh, for only one resource. So I just say for this one, for this person, I can see the average time spent by this person performing a certain activity. So you can really drill down into, into those processes and look at the data. Um, what we have seen right now is static, uh, static um, data analysis. Um, but um, what if I want to see, I, I have seen these this frequencies, how often the activities are happening, and, uh, but I don't know how this uh, is distributed in time. If there is a, an, um, some, some kind of linear progress or there are peaks or something like that. So what I can do is I can animate, I can replay the event log on that process map and I could set the speed of that. Um, so I, I'm just right now I'm setting it to, to quite fast speed so I can see that was Monday, this is Tuesday and I see that between those days there are certain number of activities uh, or processes staying in a certain activity. For example here they're approving on, on specific level. So uh, I can stop it, I can zoom, I can, I can filter that, that down. Um, if we are talking about filtering options, uh, filtering by variation is not the only option. You can um, use any combination of, of different filtering uh, parameters. So you can filter by time data, you can filter by time frames, uh, processes that started in January or finishing in, in, uh, uh, during the summer month um, or, or passing through a certain year. Um, you can focus on processes uh, based on different attributes. So, for example, you are only interested in those uh, processes where uh, there is a certain supplier involved in that, in that process or a certain customer or department or cost center. Uh, you can filter by KPIs. So, for example, uh, let's say we want to see only, um, we, are, we are analyzing a process based on duration of, of those process instances and the enterprise set a KPI that all those processes should end uh, by uh, in, in one and a half week. So very easily I can set a filter to one and a half week and here I see that these are 4% of, uh, of cases and 5% of events and I can focus my anal analytical attention only to that part of, uh, of the data. And um, there are other filtering options, sequential filters, which are allowing you to find uh, potential frauds. So, for example, if a purchase order was created by a certain person and then approved by the same person, it could be a fraudulent situation and you can find that easily by filtering the data. Uh, when you are filtering the data, the results can be saved in a form of different views and I have some certain views prepared here. So I have uh, already filtered uh, this, this invoice approval process and here is the invoice approval process filtered for uh, region of Bulgaria and Denmark and um, this is a certain uh, process running in those two countries 
And um, I'm interested in comparing that process in, in, uh, with, with the same variation of the process or same process, but running in a different region. So I have filtered Falkland Islands uh, for that purpose, stored in a different view, and I have this possibility to compare those processes. So I'm switching to compare view, and now I can add uh, this Falkland Island process as a new layer, and it will immediately show me uh, using the visualization colors and the echo effects and the numbers, uh, the differences between those processes. So how many instances um, are, are there um, uh, in, uh, when those processes are compared? And it also shows me that in Falkland Islands, there, is, uh, there were certain cases where um, uh, there was a demand for more information in the process, but this, this certain activity is, being, uh, is, is happening only in that, in that region. If I click on uh, a certain activity, I get the complete details. Not only performance details, so I can see that in uh, Bulgaria and Denmark, the mean duration time is shorter than in Falkland Islands for the approval, but I can also see the people involved, the suppliers involved, um, and I can switch on any, any other attribute uh, for that purpose. And if you are working with um, um, colleagues um, on, on, on the analysis of a certain process, uh, Minit also allows you um, to use um, what we call collaboration features. So you can have this kind of news feed uh, where you can uh, um, uh, where you can store uh, notes, where you can communicate with your colleagues, and kind of like like uh, Slack or or Facebook style, and uh, you can also save uh, screenshots. Uh, we call that snapshots. It's an interactive state of the analysis. You can attach it to those comments and just um, uh, share with your colleagues, so they can they can really uh, go um, uh, uh, to the point where you've seen a certain bottleneck or or certain point uh, a certain problem. Okay. Um, the last thing probably from, from this um, demonstration point of view uh, that I would like to show or, or um, tell you about is uh, the exporting possibilities. Everything you see here is exportable, so you can export the process map in the visual format, in a graphical format, PNG file, you can export it in an XML file, you can export the animation as a video, uh, you can export the data in, in CSV format, and uh, talking about the data, there are many um, um, uh, there are, there are two, basically two possibilities. Uh, so you can um, uh, you can um, export it uh, as the as a filtered event log, for example. So you can filter by a certain region, and then you just um, export that um, um, export that filtered event log for further purpose. Or you can export so-called case data, uh, meaning that. Um, uh, it will aggregate the events into into single uh, single lines um, uh, and and uh, put all the calculated data like case duration to that to that line to that case and uh, uh, what is the purpose of this? Well, um, I have right now started a Power BI desktop and what you can see here is the exported data from that invoice approval process that we have seen in minute and. Uh, uh, building uh, a BI dashboard based on the data. So you can enhance the analysis by, for example, interactively analyzing the uh, cost centers uh, here and then the suppliers by cost centers. Here we can look at the different suppliers, how they are distributed in the world, um, and, and uh, you can look at the performance of, uh, of approvers, of people, how in time they are approving uh, the data. So uh, uh, so you can enhance the analysis and uh, and really switch on also the business intelligence um, area uh, to that. Okay, um, so probably that's um, for the demonstration. And uh, let me continue here in the with the slides. And uh, so let's look at at some. Real case studies that we've uh, we've done with with few uh, customers. Um, the first one was uh, Jeffco. Uh, it was that process that you've seen. There was another process for uh, for purchase order approval, um, and um, 
that was a very very nice situation because Jeffco was our customer for um, business process automation as well, and we uh, did this business process automation in a, in a BPM suit. And after some time, we came with Minute, and we asked them if they would like to see the results. And they asked us, like, what do you want to show us? You you automated the process. We optimized that process together, so there are no more optimization points. But um, the interesting thing was that we showed them the results, and we even after that automation, even uh, when the customer was thinking that everything is working uh, very well, we found certain points where they can optimize. And uh, this was not uh, based on uh, changing the process, so we did not have to change the process. It was based on, on for example, communicating with the suppliers, finding those, those spots where they can eliminate some manual spots uh, or steps in that process because they are um, they are really, uh, for example, not using uh, the right functionality in the system, or and so on. And they were able to raise the productivity by by you know 60 percent. So uh, uh, really, the outcome was using the same amount of people, of staff, for for adding two more countries uh, to to process in the invoice approval process. Another very nice um, case study was done together with uh, City University, and this is a really beautiful uh, example of um, how um, how people are imagining um, um, what is a business process. And most of the time, it is the process in finance, it is a process in banks. But even studying a certain subject in a university is a process, and. Uh, City University in Slovakia had a nice idea to make a personalized university. They have a certain study subject where they, uh, where they are uh, uh, studying using Moodle system, uh, e-learning system, just without any attendance in the school. And um, they said, okay, we want to compare the usage of that system for the A and B graders with the students that are failing in that subject or that are having uh, bad, bad grades, bad uh, finishing marks. So, um, and it really, the analysis really showed that there is a difference in the activities that were performed by the A graders and the E graders. There were differences between um, uh, the A E graders were using it in peaks and so on. And um, again, the outcome was easier student onboarding. Uh, they were able to create something like a best practice guide for the new students coming in. Uh, like, uh, hey, this is this is something that you can use in order to get a better grade if you use the system uh, uh, based on the experience of previous students. Um, a very good customer uh, uh, we have here in in, in Slovakia is the KBC Group, Chase Bay Bank, um, and they were analyzing um, uh, a. Uh, um, mortgage loan process that was automated by their process improvement uh, department. Um, and the analytical results from, from here was, um, I call it branch back office dilemma. Uh, they were really uh, thinking like where, where uh, like the process was um, taking too long and um, they were finding um, the reason, whether the reason is in the branches or the back office because the branches are collecting some documents and data and sending that uh, back to the back office. And well, they found uh, uh, that uh, in 30 percent of uh, cases where there is a rework needed, um, uh, the back office is getting incomplete information and even branches are waiting with sending the information till the end of the business day. So they are prolonging the process uh, by, by not sending the data right uh, at the moment uh, when they have it. Um, and it, it is also interesting from the social point of view, from the social view of the process, they were also uh, they have been able to identify some personal issues between certain proposals and and approvers in in the bank, uh, or like uh, where the communication was taking too long, or there was uh, no data even after some some um, some complaints and so on. So uh, they were right now able to create a methodology for for this bank uh, branch back office communication. And lastly, uh, this is an example uh, connected with what Richard was telling um, about the comparison of, of manual and the automatic process. And this is, uh, uh, well, we cannot uh, mention the bank that, uh, that is behind, but uh, the, uh, this case study was done uh, by KPMG. And um, 
the nice outcome is the time to analysis reduction. They were able to gather the data in maybe this two weeks, I, I remember that, yeah, two weeks, uh, um, partly because of, of some, some issues, you know, with the extraction, partly with uh, issues with the compliance, you know, to, to get the data from, from the bank, of course, and then uh, they, 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 when they got the data, they returned to the bank in, in, in two days. And they said, we would like to show you the results of our analysis. And the bank was very surprised, like, uh, okay, you had the data for two days, like, what do you want to show us? Uh, do you have some results already? Already?" And they were able to show the reality, how the process looks like. They were able to discuss the business process with the customer and really go uh, and, and, and um, basically um, analyze the process and suggest the next steps for, uh, for uh, improvement. So, um, to sum up, MINIT is, is uh, we think, a solution that is offering um, a high-performance process mining uh, with, a, with, a, with a very complex uh, set of functionalities um, needed for analysis, for interactive uh, presentation, for, um, for speaking with, uh, with, the, uh, with the customer. And is offering this this kind of possibilities for the end customer as well as for consulting companies uh, and and analysts and consultants who are to working with with some end customers. Uh, so there's um, um, possible to analyze the process from really different angles, from the viewpoint of statistics, from the viewpoint of variations, from uh, viewpoint of uh, creating different uh, interactive charts and uh, seeing the dynamics uh, in, in the animation view, and uh, even more drilling down in the process. Uh, we are getting many questions about uh, how difficult is it to, to get a minute to work. and. Uh, uh, basically, we have uh, we shown you that um, Minit is, is um, um, connectable to um, to almost any system using either the ODBC drivers provided, or if you have the um, easiest CSV file exports, or you have a DB system behind, uh, it's not a problem, and uh, um, we we can connect to that and 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 analyze that. So um, so I think there is a, there's really a unique value. Uh, behind that. Okay, um, thank you very much. I will hand, hand over to, to Richard. Uh, thank you, Michal. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, one final thing that we wanted to do before we wrap up the, the whole webinar and uh, leave room for the Q&A was that we were quite excited about being part of the PEX community and Therefore, we decided that we'll give away one uh, process analysis, a package of process analysis together with Minit uh, to one of the participants, as well as to other two participants uh, that will receive the license for three months for free, an unlimited full license of Minit. And the only thing that you need to do in order to qualify or to get inside of, of this uh, giveaway that we are putting together, you just need to go to that link that you see uh, below and fill out some information. It's probably taking you two to three minutes uh, to fill it out. And within a few days, I think it's uh, one week, that we will start announcing uh, the winners. So if you would like to experience what Minute can do for you and uh, how uh, how you can really boost the process optimization, as, as Michal was telling you, this is a really good opportunity to do so. So please, if you're interested, just go to www.minute.io to our new website slash qualify and fill out the information and we'll inform you of the rest. Thank you for listening and let's take some questions. Um, yes, thank you, Mikhail and uh, Richard. Uh, thank you for presenting today. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, we've had some questions through. Um, just so you're aware, um, if you have any, the audience, if you have any questions, uh, some extra questions for, for Mikhail and Richard, then um, please uh, submit them through the chat function, and we will try and get to them. Um, but let's go on to ones we've had so far. So the first one is, um, what other features are in the roadmap for the near future? 
Um, okay, thank you for the question. Um, yes, we'll have uh, we have many many um, new features prepared. What I can tell is that we are right now. Um, uh, or what you have seen is is version two uh, that we introduced in uh, September 2016. Uh, we are right now uh, intensively working on on version 2.1, um, where. Um, there's a beautiful, there are, there are maybe, I would say, three beautiful topics. Uh, the first one is data validation. So uh, um, we have experience from, from the partners and customers that um, how they are working with the data. They just take the event logs, they put it into Minute, and then they want Minute to, to find out if the data are correct or not. So we are really emphasizing data validation and then trying to focus on that. Um, we would also like to really make the experience even better. So there are, there are uh, UX improvements. Uh, what you have seen, like importing of the process and the importing of data sources, this will be much easier. This will be really, um, I don't want to say one click uh, issue, but, but uh, maybe three clicks. Uh, but it will be really faster. And, uh, and uh, another beautiful area is financial analysis. Uh, we heard uh, uh, to the feedback. We're, we're, we've been listening to the feedback from from our partners and customers um, uh, that they they are focusing on uh, processes and process variants, which are um, I would say um, uh, which either uh, uh, there's too much cost connected to those variations of the process or there is uh, a lot of money flowing through that variation. So we are focusing on analyzing the processes from that point of point of view. So we, you, you are able to enhance the event log with financial data or data connected to costs per resource, per activity uh, and so on. Uh, there's no problem to analyze the flows and to really come up with with the costs for um, <clears throat> I'm sorry for the for the process variations and and uh, this analysis so this is something we have uh, right now in the roadmap and there are many many th more things to to come in the future thank you um so the second question we have here is um, are you international uh, yes we are international we um, we're proposing uh, or, or um, offering offering Minit uh, on an international basis. Uh, the headquarters are in uh, Bratislava, Slovakia. We have um, a representation in uh, in the Netherlands uh, in Eindhoven. Uh, we have representation in uh, Australia in Melbourne, and uh, for for the uh, Epic region and uh, um, yeah. Um, ah, sorry, yeah, uh, and the and the US uh, in in I think in Seattle, yeah. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> the next question: um, Do you see synergy for usage of Minute in software engineering? Uh, yes, that's a that's a nice question. Um, uh, I. Uh, I personally see the, the synergy, and uh, I have experienced the synergy <laughs> myself or in, uh, in in the company with with my team, uh, because um, we have been using Minute for um, in three areas in in, in software engineering, in, in I would say application development, um, and this is you can use uh, you can find processes everywhere. So uh, the first thing was user experience testing or user experience uh, analysis. Uh, you can uh, take an application or a web shop or a web page portal solution, and uh, the journey of the of the of the user through that application is is a process, and there are many variations of that process, and you can analyze that, and you can uh, do some uh, user uh, experience testing, uh, um, uh, and and uh, evaluate uh, which, for example, journey through that application is better. Uh, the second one was uh, we have used Minute for our own performance uh, testing. Uh, so analyzing, like sending 1,000 1, uh, virtual users uh, to, 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 uh, to our application or our solution and, and then analyzing the uh, performance bottlenecks uh, just by, by switching on the tracing of, of the source code in, uh, in, uh, uh, for that application. So, uh, Mm, that are that are two areas uh, where where we used uh, minute and we experienced that 
So, so yes, there are there are synergies for that. And also, I'm sorry, um, uh, we've mentioned robotic process automation. That's that's another topic, and uh, uh, you can analyze, for example, the logs from uh, uh, from robots uh, that are performing certain operations. Uh, there are basically also synergies with, with RPA. Uh, first uh, synergy we see in, in identifying the right process for RPA and identifying the, the right point for RPA in a, in a, in a core process. And, uh, and the third one uh, is uh, to analyze and evaluate how the robots are performing, how the robotic automation helped uh, the customer. Uh, and maybe to uh, if the robots are performing, of course, faster or, or better than than uh, certain users, uh, they may uh, you know um, like put a lot of pressure on on the systems and so evaluate also these performance uh, problems. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so the final question we have here is: um, We are using Salesforce. Uh, can Minute analyze data from Salesforce? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I was talking about um, the, the connection possibilities, and uh, um, there is a possibility to use any ODBC driver um, from from different providers. There are companies like CData, there are companies like Connecting uh, Software, uh, we are cooperating with, uh, who are offering ODBC drivers to those systems. And uh, I remember uh, they have a Salesforce connector. So the only thing you, you need to do is install the ODBC connector. Uh, just aim it to, to that instance of uh, your Salesforce system. And you can extract the data the same way you have seen me extracting the data uh, from the SQL server I have here locally. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for all your questions. Um, that does actually bring an end uh, to today's webinar. Um, just so you know, the uh, the audio and the slides uh, from the webinar will be available within the coming days, um, so please look out for that. But yes, we'd just like to say thank you to Mikhail and Richard once again, and um, I hope to see you all soon. Thank you very much. We thank you for your time and participation, and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye.